The Caribbean Sea glistens under the radiant sun, its surface shimmering like a sheet of glass, undisturbed and peaceful. Its turquoise waters gently caress the powdery white sands of Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands, creating a scene that feels timeless and serene. Tourists and locals alike bask in this tropical paradise, soaking up the sun and the gentle breeze, blissfully unaware of the immense power lurking just beneath the surface. Beneath this tranquil surface, tectonic plates are locked in a slow-motion collision, their movements imperceptible to the naked eye but relentless and unstoppable. This peaceful scene hides a threat that has been building for millions of years, a silent force gathering strength in the darkness below. The danger isn't mythical, it's geological, a deep wound in the Earth's crust that stretches for hundreds of miles, waiting for the right moment to release its fury. Massive plates grind and stick, storing energy like a coiled spring, the tension mounting with every passing year, every subtle shift. The ocean gives no hint of the tension building just offshore, its calm surface masks the restless forces below. Imagine standing on a San Juan beach, the day perfect, warm sun, gentle waves, a sky so blue it seems endless, until the sea's rhythm suddenly breaks and everything changes in an instant. In a heartbeat, all that stored energy could be unleashed, displacing unimaginable volumes of water and sending a towering wall of seawater racing toward the unsuspecting coast. This isn't a question of if, but when. The countdown is silent, but it is always ticking. The threat is written in the very structure of the seafloor, hidden beneath the blue, in the shadowy depths of the Puerto Rico Trench. We watch the skies for hurricanes, bracing for storms we can see, but the greatest danger may rise, from the depths, silent and unseen, until it is too late. The beauty of the Caribbean lulls us into forgetting the raw power beneath our feet, a power that has shaped these islands, and will do so again. Today's calm is just a pause, in a geological drama, that will one day erupt, reminding us that paradise and peril are never far apart. North of Puerto Rico lies the Puerto Rico Trench, the Atlantic's deepest point. This underwater canyon stretches over 500 miles, plunging nearly 27,500 feet. If Mount Everest sat in the trench, its peak would still be a mile underwater. The trench marks a violent boundary. The North American plate is forced beneath the Caribbean plate in a process called subduction. This isn't a gentle slide, the plates stick, building up immense stress. Unlike other subduction zones, here the plates also slide past each other, creating tangled geological tension. Scientists warn this area could unleash earthquakes of magnitude 8 or higher. Such a quake would release energy equal to thousands of nuclear bombs, just miles from populated coasts. The Puerto Rico Trench shatters the illusion of a quiet Atlantic. It's a silent testament to the forces shaping our world, and a potential birthplace for the next great disaster. Hidden in the depths, it waits. Deep in the Puerto Rico Trench, tectonic plates are locked, pressure mounting year after year. The rock bends, storing energy like a ruler about to snap. When the stress finally overcomes friction, the result is a massive earthquake. The seafloor could thrust upward by tens of feet in seconds, triggering a catastrophic tsunami. This isn't hypothetical. Geological evidence and historical accounts confirm it's happened before. The longer the plates remain locked, the more powerful the eventual quake will be. What makes this time bomb unique is its proximity to land. The epicenter could be less than 75 miles from Puerto Rico, the Dominican Republic, and the Virgin Islands. There would be almost no time to react. The earthquake's violent shaking would be the only warning. In the chaos, the sea would already be gathering strength for a second, even more devastating blow. The threat is real, immediate, and terrifying. The countdown is silent, but relentless. When a massive earthquake ruptures the seafloor, an immense surge of energy is released, transferring instantly to the water above. This sudden movement is the catalyst for one of nature's most powerful and destructive forces. The ocean floor jolts upward with incredible force, displacing a staggering volume of water in mere seconds and creating a tsunami that radiates outward in all directions. In the vast expanse of deep water, the tsunami wave is barely noticeable, just a few feet high blending in with the regular swells, but it races across the ocean at jetliner speeds, sometimes reaching up to 500 miles per hour. 
Ships at sea might not even feel it pass beneath them, as the wave's energy is spread over a long wavelength, making it almost invisible to those on the surface. But as the tsunami nears the shallower waters of the shore, it slows dramatically and grows in height, transforming into a towering wall of water that threatens everything in its path. A tsunami can arrive as a series of waves, minutes or even hours apart. The first wave isn't always the largest, and each successive wave can be more destructive than the last. One deadly sign is when the sea suddenly recedes, exposing the ocean floor and leaving fish and debris behind. This strange phenomenon can lure people toward the water, unaware of the impending danger. The incoming wave is a churning, debris-filled torrent, capable of leveling buildings, uprooting trees, and scouring entire landscapes in a matter of moments. For islands like Puerto Rico, the time between the earthquake and the arrival of the wave could be less than 30 minutes, leaving almost no margin for error. There would be no time for official warnings or organized evacuations. The window to act is frighteningly short. The impact would be swift, overwhelming, and total. Entire communities could be swept away in minutes. The tsunami's force is almost beyond comprehension, with water smashing through concrete steel and everything in its path. In such moments, survival depends on immediate action. Every second counts when the waves are unleashed. The islands closest to the trench, Puerto Rico, Hispaniola, the Virgin Islands, would be hit first and hardest, with almost no time to react. These communities, perched on the edge of the Atlantic, would face the full force of nature's fury. Waves towering over 50 feet could inundate cities like San Juan and Santo Domingo, surging miles inland and swallowing entire neighborhoods. Streets would become rivers, and buildings could be swept away in minutes. The initial earthquake would devastate infrastructure, toppling buildings and cutting off power, and the tsunami would finish the job, leaving little standing in its wake. The wave's energy would radiate outward across the Atlantic, traveling at jetliner speeds, unstoppable and relentless. The Bahamas and Cuba would be struck within hours, their coastlines battered and communities flooded. Meanwhile, the U.S. East Coast would have only a few hours' warning, barely enough time to evacuate vulnerable areas. Cities from Miami to Boston, with dense populations and critical coastal infrastructure, are especially vulnerable. Millions live and work along these shores, and evacuation would be a logistical nightmare. Even after crossing the vast ocean, the tsunami could still be 10 to 20 feet high, flooding ports, crippling economies, and leaving entire regions underwater. The wave would also reach Europe and Africa, Canary Islands, Portugal, Spain, Ireland, the UK, causing significant damage even after hours of travel, as the energy dissipates but remains destructive. The Azores sitting in the mid-Atlantic would be hit much sooner, with little time to prepare for the oncoming disaster. A single event could become a pan-Atlantic disaster, affecting dozens of countries at once, overwhelming international response efforts. The humanitarian crisis would be overwhelming, with millions displaced, homes destroyed, and basic services disrupted for weeks or even months. The economic shock would ripple worldwide, disrupting trade, financial markets, and supply chains far beyond the Atlantic Basin. The Puerto Rico Trench holds the power to devastate the entire Atlantic world, a sleeping giant beneath the waves. Its threat is global, not just regional, a reminder that the forces of nature can unite continents in tragedy and challenge. History proves the Atlantic's destructive potential. On November Varn 1755, a massive earthquake struck off Portugal's coast. The quake, up to magnitude 9, reduced Lisbon to rubble and ignited fires. Forty minutes later, the sea receded, then three tsunami waves up to 40 feet high crashed into the city. The tsunami devastated Portugal, Spain, Morocco, and sent waves as far as Ireland and the Caribbean. The Lisbon disaster killed up to 100,000 people and changed European history. It showed that a single Atlantic event can have continent-wide consequences. The 1755 tsunami crossed the ocean, a chilling precedent for what could happen in reverse from the Puerto Rico Trench. The lesson is clear. The Atlantic is capable of unleashing unimaginable fury. The past is a warning, not just a memory. We ignore it at our peril. The Pacific, scarred by tsunamis, has built a culture of preparedness. Warning systems, drills, and public education save lives, 
The Pacific Tsunami Warning Center uses a dense network of buoys and sensors to detect threats in real time. In the Pacific, evacuation routes are marked and communities practice what to do. The Atlantic, by contrast, is dangerously complacent. Few remember the risk and public awareness is low. The U.S. Tsunami Warning System covers the Atlantic, but with far fewer sensors. Most people on the U.S. East Coast or in the Caribbean don't know what to do if the sea suddenly recedes or the ground shakes. In the Caribbean, a tsunami could arrive before any official warning. Only public education and personal readiness can save lives. In a region where tsunamis can strike in minutes, nature's warnings are your best defense. The first sign, a strong, long earthquake. If you feel violent shaking near the coast, don't wait. Move to higher ground immediately. The second sign, the sea suddenly recedes or rises rapidly. This is not a normal tide, it's the tsunami's arrival. The third sign, a deep roaring sound from the ocean like a freight train. If you experience any of these, evacuate without hesitation. These signs may not all appear, and the order can vary. Sometimes the earthquake is distant and weak, but the tsunami is still coming. The rule is simple. If you sense danger, act fast. Waiting for confirmation could be fatal. Your survival depends on recognizing and responding to nature's warnings. Seconds matter. Scientists monitor the Puerto Rico Trench with GPS and seismometers, tracking every subtle shift. The region is alive with microquakes, constant reminders of the stress building below. GPS data shows the ground is slowly deforming, confirming the fault is locked and loaded. We can't predict exactly when disaster will strike, but the conditions are clear and present. Recent mapping reveals massive underwater landslides, another way a tsunami could be triggered. The more we learn, the more dangerous the region appears. The evidence is undeniable. The hazard is real and growing. We have history's warning, scientific proof, and clear signs of risk. Yet, are we ready, or are we lulled by beautiful beaches and calm seas into dangerous ignorance? The Earth is warning us. The question is, will we listen before it's too late?